So what we want to do right now is look at the general ranges for different types of players in Texas Hold'em especially. So when we get into player profiling here, full ring, uh, you got of course to begin with your tags, quote unquote tags, tight aggressive players, the lines that we just saw. If it's a solid winning player, you generally want to get out of his way. Um, if there are too many of these guys at your table, definitely find a new table. Um, even if you are a really good player, I mean the best in the world, uh, playing against a bunch of tags is never fun, you know, it's never... Um, Okay, maybe it's fun if you're just playing for um, for the kick of the game, you know, and you want to be against good competition and uh, kind of like chess players, you know, high, highly skilled chess players don't necessarily like playing lower skilled chess players just because it's, um, it's too boring. But if you are looking just to win money, you don't want to be facing a bunch of tags. You don't want to be facing a lot of lags either, especially when you're out of position. We'll get to that soon, but yeah, these are the guys that you got to be careful of. Um, as well as a few other types that we'll look at here shortly. But your typical tight aggressive guy is going to have something around, you know, always this split here, this VPIP to PFR, uh, voluntarily put money in the pot to preflop raise stat of about 3 to 2, more or less, on average. Uh, went to showdown at 20%. Aggression factor post-flop, as always, is 2.8. And, you know, more or less 75% fold to C-bet. Uh, he'll be C-bet himself probably also 60 to 80 percent something like that and we'll get into more more detail as we get on the list um, preflop stats you see here again somewhere between 13 to 20 range right and for this for full ring for shorthanded games um, six max yeah so let's say five to six players you're looking at this kind of range is a bit wider of course because the fewer players that are at your table the wider you can play you know, the wider range that you can play um, the PFR is, of course, again, as you see here, this 3-2 ratio, it's also the same in 6 max. And, you know, anytime you're, you're looking at your table and you've got a decent sample size and you see players looking like this, right, that means they've got a good understanding of the game. And, yeah, they're decent players and, you know, again, if there's too many of them, look for a better, look for a better table. So, uh, tight aggressive, tight aggressive aggressive. Uh, this is kind of a further descriptor that means you have this tight aggressive pre-flop uh, and then also continued aggression post-flop so as opposed to tight aggressive then passive post-flop so we've got here um, you guys can pause the video again at any time and um, read through that but the post-flop stats are going to look something like this total aggression factor of 1.5 to 4 right? Um, again, 50 to 75 folding to C bets. Attempt to steals uh, less than 40%. That means when it's folded around to him and he's in the cut off the button or the small blind, he's going to be making an open raise from those three positions. Yeah, less than 40% of the time. Very often around 20 to 30. The 40 is actually quite high. That's completely exploitable, but you see that a lot with a lot of these tag guys. Uh, especially with lags, it's even higher. So uh, fold to steals. Uh, in the small and the big, somewhere between 75 to 90, and went to showdown only 25%, as you see here, guys, tops. Um, and one money um, at the showdown is normally very dependent, of course, on the aggression factor. Um, tight aggressive passive is, you know, you see here the reduced aggression factor, the went to showdown is similar, you know, a bit more, they, you know, they kind of get into the elephant stage, elephant, you know, calling station type of play post flop. Um, yeah, it's just a distinction between the two. There are different types of tags, of course. And again, this is a very big generalization, as always. And you should take it in. Uh, you should understand it in light of all the different factors that we mentioned in previous videos: table conditions, other players' history, uh, potential tilt, and all kinds of other stuff that goes um, into these considerations. But if you're just analyzing a table and players based on the numbers, and you see a guy looking like this. Right, just know that he's a good player, and um, yeah, play accordingly. Good. So tight passive. Uh, if he raises, get out of the way. <laughs> um, post flop, he won't fold. Top pair, top pair, top kicker over pairs. Okay, won't normally fold. Um, you rarely want to semi bluff the guy. Uh, value bets with strong two pair plus hands, etc. So his stats look a bit like this. Um, you know aggression factor of one that means if it is post flop and he starts getting really active and betting into you yeah be careful right uh, you know that he is tight so that means post flop he's gonna be on these kinda hands a lot 
right, top ki uh, top pair good kickers and over pairs. Um, these guys, a lot of times they overvalue that hand, especially uh, when big stacked or deep stacked. And I mean that's that's a relatively vulnerable hand um, post flop. So it means you got a lot of implied odds against this guy when you're playing your small and middle pairs and suited connectors max uh, max stretch pre flop, and then you you do flop these two plus uh, two pair plus hands. So this is a good guy, you know, to to play against in position, um, especially with speculation hands or speculative hands that you can then yeah get paid out on post flop. Right, these are kind of typical stats for this kind of guy again. Um, pre flop we've got yeah 13 to 20 uh, pre flop raise 0 to 5 percent very very rarely and yeah tight passive passive here you have one to showdown aggression factors tight passive aggressive one to showdowns a bit a uh, bit lower with a bit higher aggression okay uh, this kind of guy is tight passive aggressive is he's, he's kind of one who yeah, likes. I mean, he's going to be on a tight range, and he's not going to really play on, and definitely not uh, play on aggressively unless he hits well on the flops. So this guy's a bit more dangerous, uh, I would say, than than this cat here for sure. Uh, anytime you get a guy who's passive post flop, it's really good for your draws. Um, anytime you start seeing aggression numbers like this, you got to understand that if you are on speculative hands, um, he's going to be knocking you off of that a lot. He's rarely going to give you odds to draw. And yeah, that's the same for tags as it is for lags, as it is again for these kind of uh, yeah nitty kind of guys who then really turn up the heat when they actually flop something good, right? So just know that. I mean, if you're going to be on drawing hands, you want to be against these these kind of cats, okay? Passive guys post flop um, that you can then get paid out all the way down to the river with. All right, um, weak tight. We've got here rocks and nits. Um, they very quick to fold against aggression and you see here winter showdowns of up to 22 percent ish and yeah very low aggression factor we've got just a general definition of a nit here quote unquote it's a generally uptight player uh, uptight with money and not willing to play without an enormous at least perceived advantage post flop uh, generally is a weak tight passive kind of player um, this guy here, you only want to play with monsters and fold off into raises, even with the second nut hand, right? As we just mentioned above, uh, against again nits, it, the the implied odds are again very very good. So speculative hands in position against these kind of players are advisable from time to time. So-called lags, okay? These guys are tough to play, especially when out of position. Um, he's going to be playing back at you a lot. He's going to be three betting you light, as we have here. That means he's going to be re-raising your pre-flop raises with sometimes marginal and speculative hands, and it's going to be difficult to distinguish because he's going to be doing it a lot. So he'll also be three betting light, um, and also doing the exact same with very very strong hands and even monsters. So good lags are really really tough customers, and I would advise in general for you guys fluctuating between this lag and tag style okay always aggressive um, I mean tight aggressive and loosening up you can say loose aggressive as you get into later positions and depending on again play certain certain table conditions you can just go completely lag you can even go um, you can even play a maniac style and be quite uh, quite profitable on extremely uh, passive tables and especially when playing live if you know, if you're if you're playing guys who don't really know the game, or they do know the game, but they're you know a lot of live players, especially at house games and stuff. There's these really nitty kind of types. Um, the game's still relatively new in Europe, and you're gonna catch that a lot also uh, in casinos uh, in Europe, especially. And yeah, this lag style is quite, yeah, given certain some uh, circumstances, quite um, quite useful sometimes even even more useful than any of the others um, again half position on this guy if you find that you're sitting right uh, sitting to the right of a lag and you're not able to handle the guy uh, it's time to it's time to move right you're not going to be you're not going to be able to steal the blinds which is in the end quite a bit of your total income especially at the higher levels um, 
he's going to be playing back at you again. Yeah, it's just an uphill fight. So have these guys to your right. Okay, you want to be in position, quote unquote, on these guys. And yeah, general point here: whatever style uh, your opponent plays, it's very, as a general rule, good to play an opposite style. Uh, style. Sometimes you want to fight uh, fire with water, and again, sometimes you want to fight fire with fire. So just know know your opponents. Know. Uh, know how they're adjusting. Know if you, yeah, you can hint, you know, if, or you can you can kind of tell if they're tilting. Um, you know what uh, what's going on in their psyche, and adjust accordingly. Okay. Uh, but as a general as a general rule, when somebody's playing loose, you can often tighten up and be profitable that way. When somebody's playing tight, you can often loosen up and be profitable that way. Okay. The typical loose aggressive player, you can look at, you know, full ring again, of course. Uh, 28 B pip, um, 22 PFR. We've got here 23 went to showdown, 3.5 plus aggression factor, and folding the C bets, yeah, similar to the tag. Uh, as you see here, of course, you know, this would be a very, very loose, you know, 40% range. That means he's playing two out of five hands at 40%, okay? PFR, um, anywhere from 15 to 20, yeah, 15 to 30, say. Um, and then you got lags, which are loose aggressive aggressives. Um, yeah, arguably the toughest opponent you'll ever face. Um, play very tight against them, slow play a lot, and see bet less. So that means these guys who are aggressive post slot, they're the good ones to float. Okay, and see the see the video on bet types for that. These are the good guys to slow play on again non suited, non connected boards. Uh, when you do have monster flops. Um, these are the guys, you know, that you want to, again, when they are to your right, let them do the betting, let them do what they do best, and play over aggressively, and yeah, adjust as I had mentioned accordingly. Uh, loose aggressive passive guys, they, they're very rare, matter of fact. Uh, and here we have very good quote unquote customer, uh, strong pre flop, but they're all over the place post flop. Uh, again, good implied odds against any player who is passive post flop. So, when you're looking at aggression factors of you know two or less. Right, these are the kind of guys that um, that you're going to have the implied odds against. These are the kind of guys that are going to let you draw cheaply, not always, but on average. And yeah, these are these are the customers you're looking for uh, to play speculation hands with in position. Okay, went to showdown up to 35%, something like that. Maniacs are the source of a lot of money. And yeah, okay, as as stated here, and also tilt. So leave the table if you're out of position and you're not able to control the guy. They are so all over the place that you very often have no freaking idea what these cats are playing. This applies both to cash games and tournaments, both full ring and six max. And these kind of guys, they you know they're gamblers, right? They're just pure gamblers. They're there for the rush. And they're gonna they're gonna push to the limit. So general general tip against these guys is to play tighter and get it in when you have the best of it, right? All the way in, and make sure that you just have a you know bankroll to to handle the swings because this guy is gonna give you a lot of variance, right? In any given session, you can make a mountain of money from him and you can also lose quite a bit so if you are on a certain table with a maniac and again he's sitting to your left and you notice that things are not going well that he's yeah he's actually getting in more into he's getting under your skin more than you're getting under his and yeah you maybe stack off one time don't if you happen to stack off twice that's the end of that table for you okay just remember that li um, limit loss rule per table. That means any time you lose two stacks on any given table, also irrespective of the, the player type that you're facing here, um, be able to leave that table. Okay? It's just you might be playing perfectly. You, you gotta have but you even in that case you gotta have really, really good reasons to stay after you've lose after you've lost um, two stacks because people are gonna see that you're losing they're going to play better against you. They're going to—I mean, even better players or even worse players are going to get inspired to play against you because you've lost twice. And 
yeah, you, your your credibility just goes down. Uh, the general vibe goes down. It's it's not a good situation to be in. So remember that one, guys. If you stack off once, um, you know you can play on given certain table conditions, no problem. If you stack off twice, it's time to either leave or um, be willing to leave as soon as you as soon as you lose the next stack or or take another hit. Okay, it's just there's just the likelihood of tilt is too high. Again, especially online, there's infinite numbers of tables that you can play at, and that's that's what you need to do. Good. So you'll see typical maniac stats. They're playing every other hand, 53% here, uh, raising every third. Right when they when they get a hand of these 50%, they're getting to the showdown 30% of the time. Um, the aggression factor is seven plus, and uh, rarely folding to c bets because you know they're they're action players, they're live players. So again, this is a breakdown of kind of the ranges that you're going to see with these guys. Aggression factors of four upwards, and yeah, so, I mean a lot of tags. I mean extreme tags, for example, and lags. We're going to have aggression factors also in this area, but that again, in most playing conditions, can be can be a leak. Right, yeah, um, that's, I think, you know, when I analyze my hands, my, my biggest problem is probably too, being too aggressive, okay, but even, I mean, even with really good players, you are going to see this from, from time to time, sixes and sevens, um, with short stack strategy professionals, as we'll get into here briefly, um, you can even see higher aggression factors than that, and higher, of course, higher winter showdowns, because they're playing with only 20 big blinds as a buy-in, but what we have here is um, pure aggression, from these mania guys, even with horrible hands, uh, they punish weakness and they bluff a lot. Okay, and you're not, yeah, again, anytime you, you're playing an aggressive player, you're rarely going to get the odds to draw. Have that in your mind before you get involved in a pot pre flop, especially when these guys are to your left. All right. Play passively against him and let him do the betting. So this is a check call, check raise kind of guy, isolating when you're in position. And here we have when you're out of position, you have to play tight. Uh, he's capable of multi-barrel bluffs, light pre-flop three bets and four bets, as well as huge over bets. So, again, you're not gonna know what this guy's playing half the time. And I've selected a, I've selected one example hand in the replayer that we'll look at, even where I'm playing aces, and I played it way ahead, way behind. Um, just yeah, and maybe maybe it was weak play, but uh, it's one of those situations where you you just can't know. You know, if the guy. Uh, did two pair, you know, if, everything is possible with these cats, and yeah, you just gotta, you gotta adjust, and again, if you find that you're starting to play their game, it's time to leave the table. If you see that they're starting to adjust and play kind of like, you know, uh, maniacs, all of a sudden they're becoming less aggressive when they're playing against you, uh, they're playing fewer hands, that means that you got them. You know, they're starting to adjust their play to your style, which is always, always beneficial against any opponent. Okay, have them play your game. If you notice it's going the other way, look for a better place and uh, yeah, even even finish the session. For example, definitely again, if you lose a couple stacks, um, especially to these guys, you know when they pull the river stuff or they you know they flop this amazing two pair plus uh, ridiculousness with eight fours off suit and whatever else can happen. Um, yeah, that's yeah, it's. You know, it's a good player to be playing against, and if you, if you're completely tilt resistant, then you can play on, uh, especially when you're in position on this guy. But as a general rule, word of the wise, after two stacks at any given table, it's time to start looking for a new place.